So welcome back to another week of Code Club. Uh, again, my name is Pat Foss, I'm a professor at the University of Michigan. And through these Code Club activities, I'm trying to lead everybody in an incremental way through learning our programming and trying to do it in a social format. And so I'll talk for a bit about two new functions in the package called dplyr. Uh, we're gonna talk about um, count and um, filter. And then I'll talk about it, and then I'll turn you loose to work on some exercises. And at the end, we'll come back and we'll share uh, what you all came up with. And, and hopefully people won't be too bashful to, to speak up with what they, what they found. Um, so uh, last week, we talked about this data set that was generated by 538, where they asked respondents, about 1,200 people, uh, whether or not they use the Oxford comma, or whether or not they treat the word data uh, as a singular noun or as a plural noun. So do, we, do you say the data are interesting or the data is interesting, right? And so technically data is a plural noun, but language evolves and so usage and how we think about words changes as well. And so it's kind of an interesting data set. Um, the data is uh, primarily categorical data of uh, kind of how people answer different questions about the word, these two different grammatical points, as well as things like their socioeconomic and educational background. And so, as I said, uh, this week, we're gonna talk about the count fil function and the filter function. Both of these are in the dplyr package, which is part of the overall tidyverse. So if you weren't able to join us last week, um, we, we, as I said, we talked about the rename and recode functions that we use to modify a data set from this study that 538 um, conducted. And then we, um, we use those functions to get our data frame to be easier to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and copy uh, this code chunk that's um, up here in the prompt. And I'm going to come over to my RStudio window. And just to make it easier to see what's going on, I'm going to slide that over. And I'm going to make my font a bit bigger. I'm then going to open up a new R script. And I'm going to paste my code from uh, last time into this window. And if I go ahead and highlight the whole thing with, say, Command A, I can then click Run, and it then runs through and, and does uh, those commands. Okay. And so what we'll see, again, is we load the tidyverse library that gets us that dplyr package and ggplot and things like that. For today, we'll just be using stuff from dplyr. We then read in the data set from GitHub. We do a bunch of renaming, and then we recode the Oxford or not call, uh, variable we made, as well as the singular or plural uh, column that we made. And then it gives us output that tells us basically that everything worked fine. It's in red, which is kind of scary, but we look through this and everything, everything looks great, okay? So um, like I said, I'm mainly gonna be working down in the, in the console. And uh, I will go ahead and clear my screen, which I could do in our studio with Control L to put things up. And actually, you know what? I'll probably just put my face up here in the upper right corner. And so again, we can look at the GitHub variable. It's a data frame that has 13 columns. And as we can see from up here, uh, 1,129 different rows. We got respondents, uh, 1,100 respondents that answered these 13 questions for us, for, for not us, for our 538. We just get to play with the data, which is fantastic. So the first thing I want to talk about is the count function. And we saw this last week, um, and, and maybe, maybe the week before. Um, one of the things I like to do is to kind of throw something at you uh, to just get you exposed to it. And then as we go forward, kind of dig a little bit deeper into its use. Uh, education scholars say that people actually learn better that way, uh, to kind of have things slowly revealed and to see things in different contexts. And so we've seen filter in different contexts. We've seen count in different contexts. And today we're going to talk about it. And then the next time, I probably won't spend much time talking about it, um, but you'll see it in a different context and it'll cause your brain to maybe hurt, <laughs> uh, but stretch uh, to under, better understand how to use it. So we're going to start with count. And so the count function takes um, our GitHub data frame. I'm going to pipe that to count. And the count function will count the number of different times each value is used for that variable. So let me give you an example. If I put an Oxford or not, I'm gonna count the different values 
and the number of times they're used in the Oxford or not column. And so what we get is a new data frame that says Ox non-Oxford, Oxford, and then the number of times those show up. Uh, so this looks like a summary table, but it's actually a new data frame that's being generated, generated by that count function. So we see that people primarily use the Oxford comma over the non-Oxford comma. If we did something like GitHub count singular or plural, we would see that most people by about three to four fold prefer to use uh, the singular uh, understanding of data than the plural, okay? So people would prefer to say the data is interesting, right? And so um, those of us dinosaurs that like to think of data as being plural, um, perhaps need to get with the times and realize that the language is shifting, okay? So another thing we can do with count is that we can give it two variables separated by a comma for it to kind of do a contingency type table or a um, covariate table, so to speak. So perhaps we could do GitHub count singular or plural, and then we can add gender. And so then we'll see uh, that we have three gender categories, female, male, and NA. Uh, so this is probably more like sex than gender, whatever. Um, and then that we have uh, singular, plural, and NA, where someone didn't respond, right? And so we see that, um, um, that actually um, males were more likely to use the plural form of, of data than females, which I don't know what that means, whereas females were more likely to use the singular form than males. Huh, interesting. Um, so again, we can use count to get a sense of um, counts in a single category, a single variable, but then also looking across multiple categories. Um, the other thing that I like to use count for um, is to better understand, um, you know, what are the values in that column? Because um, say I did um, education, there's an education column, right? So if I do GitHub and then pipe that to count education, I now see, oh, I've got five different categories plus a, a no response category. Um, and so, I could then begin to think about, well, I wanna work on the, the data from people with a bachelor degree, or I wanna work with people with a graduate degree, okay? So that gets us to the next question. How can I take my data frame and work with subsets of the population that responded to our survey to look at how they responded to these different types of questions? And that's where the filter function comes in. And so I can now do GitHub, and type that to filter, the fil filter function, and I'm gonna give it um, an argument. So I will then say Oxford or not equals equals Oxford. And this then outputs a new data frame. It's a subset of the GitHub data frame that only has 641 rows now, but the same 13 columns. But in this case, everybody responded Oxford, picked the Oxford comma sentence. And that's again because I'm filtering on those rows where the Oxford or not variable was Oxford. Okay, so a couple things to note here. A lot's happening within the argument here for filter. So Oxford or not is the name of the column we're interested in. Oxford is the value we want out of that, variable, that, that column. And then we've got this double equal sign. So this double equal sign is a special logical function that asserts the statement the left side is equal to the right side, okay? So Oxford or not equals Oxford. So sometimes that's true, sometimes it's false. If it's true, it's gonna return the value true. If it's false, it's gonna return the value false. And so if a row is true, filter will say, we're gonna keep this. If the, if the row value is false, it's gonna say, no, we're not gonna include that in the new data frame that we create, okay? So I can add, a, I can up arrow here, and I can then do count Oxford not to count the number of times Oxford or not Oxford is used in my new data frame that's been filtered. And we see that our data frame, sure enough, only has responses where people used the Oxford comma in the sentence that they chose. Excellent, it works. All right, so a couple things to note 
if we go back to this, this filter function, there's a few places where I, <laughs> and probably you, uh, fall into error. So one problem is that this double equal is kind of a unique thing, as I mentioned. It's a logical function. Most of us are typically used to thinking of a single equal sign. So if I do a single equal sign, what I'm really trying to do is I'm trying to take, make a variable called Oxford or not and assign the value Oxford to Oxford or not, which isn't really what we want to do. We want to say, are these the same, which is a logical question. And so the error message is actually useful. Uh, usually in R, the error message is just really painful and, and are not helpful. And so it says, do you need the double equal sign? It's like, ah, sure enough, I do, right? So I can go ahead back, put in the double equal sign, and I get the right result. Another problem is that sometimes I will leave out the quote marks around Oxford. And it'll say, object Oxford not found. O object, the word object, is R's way of representing what we think of as a variable or as a column in a, in a data set. And so it's trying to look for a, a variable called Oxford, but we're not looking for a variable called Oxford. We're looking for a string or text that is the word Oxford. We're looking for the word Oxford, not the variable Oxford. And so that's why we need to wrap it in quotes. And so we can wrap it in single quotes or double quotes as we did before, and we get the same result. The key is that if we start with a single quote, we need to end with a single quote. And if we start with a double quote, we need to end with a double quote, okay? Great. Um, so the double equal sign, again, means is asserts that the left is equal to the right, and we get a true or false from that. Alternatively, we could do exclamation point equal sign. And so whenever you see the exclamation point, that in logical terms is the word not. So Oxford or not, not equal to Oxford. And so if we pipe this to count on Oxford or not, what should we get as our output? Can you guess? So we're going to get non-Oxford and the 488 responses that came from that. Okay. Awesome. So there's a lot of other logical operators that we can use, things like greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. Uh, but our data, as I mentioned earlier, is all categorical. It's all text data. Um, and so we don't have any quantitative data, numerical data, to test out those other logical operators. We'll have to wait for another data set in a future session to work with those. But this gives us a great opportunity to try to build more complicated queries in our filter function argument. So the first thing that we're going to think about is, well, maybe I want to know about people that are really pedantic about language, that they use the Oxford comma, and they think data should be plural. Okay? So there's two things there, and we want both to be true. So with what I've already taught you about the filter function, you should be able to figure this out, or at least a, a preliminary way of figuring it out. So what we're going to do is GitHub. We're going to pipe that to filter and do exactly what we've already done. Oxford or not equals equals quote Oxford. So this gets into this data frame with all the respondents who did the Oxford comma, right? We can then pipe this and do another filter function where we say singular or plural equals plural. The other thing I forgot to mention is that it is very case specific, right? So I started to type capital P plural. There is no capital P plural in this data set. So nothing would have matched, right? So you have to, you have to spell it right and you have to get uh, the, the capitalization right as well. Okay, so now this returns for us a data frame with 135 rows of people that use the Oxford comma and think data should be plural, right? And so we can double check that by adding to the end count Oxford or not, comma, um, singular or plural. And we see, like sure enough, we get 135 rows and they're all Oxford or plural, okay? So syntax, in syntax, this works, right? We get the right answer, that's all I care about. But sometimes I care about more. Sometimes I want my code uh, to be a little bit simpler and not as verbose. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show us, show you all how we can combine these two filter functions into one. To, to kind of tidy up the syntax of it. So there's two steps, there's two ways that we can do this. So we can do GitHub and pipe that to filter, and then do Oxford or not, 
equals equals Oxford. That's about right. Comma, singular or plural, equals equals plural. And I'm going to go ahead and add this count, right? So what you should see is you get the same output using putting the two logical questions together uh, in the same filter argument set, but we're separating it by a comma. What this comma says is that this expression for Oxford or not has to be true, and this singular or plural question also has to be true. If either of them is false, the whole row is excluded from the new data frame that we're going to generate. So the comma is nice, but uh, to me, it doesn't make as much sense as the other option that we can use, which is an ampersand. So I'm going to replace this comma with the funny character over a seven, which for the life of me, I cannot draw by hand. I have to use a keyboard uh, to generate that ampersand. I think normally I do like a plus or something, right? If I'm writing by hand. So that and ampersand is the word and, right? So if we run that, Sure enough, we get the same data frame back that we had initially, right? Great. One of the other reasons I like to use the ampersand is that it works well as a complement to its opposite, the OR operator. Say we want to know, well, what, what is the demographics of people that use the Oxford comma or that use data as a plural noun? Well, we can replace that AND character with a vertical line which if you look at your key to the right above the return key, that's a backslash. Uh, if you hit shift backslash, the character that's generated is this vertical line, which in R is expressed as or. So is Oxford or not equal to Oxford? Okay, if it's true, that's good. If it's false, well, we'll keep that in mind. If singular or plural is plural, is that true or false, right? So if either thing on the left or right of that vertical line is true, we're going to keep that in the new data frame we generate. If either of them are false, or if both of them are false, we will not include it. Okay, so if either is true, if both are true, we keep it. If neither is true, we're going to throw it away. Okay. And so what you see then is that we now, when we count, tabulate the number of cases of each, that um, we don't, we get non-Oxford and plural, Oxford, plural, Oxford singular, Oxford and A, right? Um, but we don't have a non-Oxford singular because non-Oxford here on the left would be false and singular here would be false. So both would be false, right? So those get thrown out and they're not carried on into the next data set. You with me? Great. So I want to take it one step more complicated. So sometimes I might want to mix and questions with or questions, right? So um, say like, give me the, the rows from females of people that um, use the Oxford comma or use data as a plural noun, right? And so it, it gets a little bit more complicated. So if we do this, GitHub, pipe that to filter. And so we want gender equals female. Um, and I think it was capital female and, right? So I want females and those who use one or the other, right? So I could then do Oxford or not equals Oxford or singular or plural equals plural. And then I'm going to count Oxford or not and singular or plural. Okay. So looking at this syntax, I'm a little bit confused. What goes first, right? I think I think it goes left to right, but I'm not I'm not really sure, right? So if it goes left to right, it's gonna say give me gender equals female and so females that use the Oxford comma or people that use plural, which isn't exactly what I want. I want females who use the Oxford comma or plural. 
So whenever I'm not sure about the order of operations, what I like to do is wrap the statement in parentheses. So if I go ahead and wrap this in parentheses, I now get what I want, which is Oxford or not and singular or plural. Right? Um, I suppose I could also do gender as a column just to prove to myself that everybody's a female. And sure enough, I can also just demonstrate what would happen if I didn't have these parentheses that I should get a male column. And sure enough, within gender, I do have male rows. So again, those parentheses are really important for directing how the calculations Great. So I think pretty much everyone is back. So um, hopefully you had uh, good discussions in your breakout group to talk about the different exercises. Um, with, I've, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and reshare my, um, I think I'm gonna share uh, my, our studio screen. Sure, if that's sharing. Um, all right, I think this is sharing my screen now. Um, so, would anybody like to volunteer uh, how they went about solving uh, the first question of which geographic region was the best represented in the survey? I can I can go ahead. Sure. Do you want me to do you want to share your screen so you can show oh, us? Yeah, or? yeah. Okay, let me do that. Go ahead. Okay. Uh let me share the screen. Um is the is the font size big enough or it looks good. Okay. So I guess I was just it was just count for the location. Um, and then it will show the different locations and the number of the respondents from there. Uh, I was actually thinking of sorting them after, but I don't know if this is a, should, is there a specific function tidyverse for that or not? Um, there is, that's great, that's a great question. So at the end of your line 85, you could add a mm -hmm. pipe character and then and just, the function, uh, or, not sort, but oh, okay. a, a range. Oh, A -R -R -A -R -A -N -G -E. and then if you put in parentheses n n yep like the column name you have there now if you run that oh row, yeah, yeah i see okay yeah. so okay. that's a ascending sort so if inside of a range uh, to the left of your n there or the left so yep and then type d, d e s c like the first four letters of mm -hmm. descend uh, and, and not a comma, but a parentheses. Uh, oh, I see. Okay. And then a pr and closing then parentheses. One. Yeah. Oh, okay. So now it's a descending sort. That's cool. Yeah, good job. Good question and wasn't too hard to add. Yeah. Great. Um, would someone else like to show, or, or what, what, yeah, would someone else like to show the second question of um, how many, Respondents cared about grammar. No need to be bashful. All right, I can I can help out with that. Um, so again, my thought process. Um, well, we we talked about this before of importance of grammar. That we could perhaps say GitHub. Um, and then we could say, um, type that to um, count importance of grammar. This shows us the different categories. So I'm gonna think that the people that thought it was somewhat important or very important were who I wanna focus on. So I'm gonna then do GitHub filter um, importance of grammar is somewhat important. Dr. School, can you share your uh, screen? Uh, yes, Thank I'm you. sorry. Thank you very much. 
No, thank you for saying something. Yeah, thank you. All right. So hopefully that looks better now. Um, so as I was saying, uh, the first thing I would do was I would count the number of different cases or different uh, values in that importance of grammar column. And, and so then I got uh, neither important or unimportant, neutral, somewhat important, somewhat unimportant, very important or very unimportant. So something to notice is that these columns are alphabetical and then the values. So what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna filter importance of grammar equals equals somewhat important or importance of grammar uh, equals equals very important. And so then this returns a data frame that has uh, 1,021 rows, okay? Um, and so then the question is, among those respondents that cared about grammar, did they have a preference for the Oxford comma or using data as a plural noun? So I'm gonna copy this line for my line 32 down. And at the end of it, I'm gonna put a pipe and I'm gonna count um, Oxford or not, okay? So again, previously we counted perhaps the number of times uh, people said somewhat important or, or perhaps said very important, but now I'm gonna, I'm gonna count on a different column, the Oxford or not column. And so this tells me that among the people that thought grammar was important, which hopefully is everyone, um, 437 of them thought, um, so 584 used the Oxford comma, 437 did not use the Oxford comma. So, um, and again, just another point that in this tutorial today, I've been writing these as kind of one line um, series of commands, one line pipelines. But if you've got a pipe, then at the end of the line, you can, at the end of the pipe character, you can put in a, an enter to get a new line. And so now we have, we make it clear that there's, there's the data, GitHub, going into these two different functions. And if we're in, up here in our R script, we can click run and it will run those three lines for us to get the same output, okay? So um, a question that I came up with was whether or not people that were older were more likely to use the Oxford comma or not, okay? And so I'm gonna look at age. So I'll do GitHub, pipe that to count age. Uh, and what we see is that the age wasn't a numerical value, it's a categorical variable, right? So they put people into age ranges or buckets based on their age. So I'm gonna define people that are basically 45 and older as being quote old. I am not there yet. Um, so I will then do GitHub and I will then do filter and I will do age equals equals um, 45 to 60 or age equals equals uh, greater than 60. So another classic error that I make, I should have a space there, um, is that I might put and in there, right? Because I want the people that are 45 to 60 and over 60, right? Uh, but what that does is that requires that the age column, the age variable have both of those values, and that's not the case. Um, but nobody can be both between 45 and 60 and over 60. So we need that vertical line that says or. So we want people that are between 45 and 60 or that are greater than 60. And we can make sure this worked by count age. And we see that we had 272 people greater than 60, 290 between 45 and 60. But I wanna know uh, the usage of Oxford comma or not among this older demographic. So instead of age, I'm gonna do Oxford or not. And so I see um, that among this demographic, 297 people did not use the Oxford comma um, and 265 did use the Oxford comma. And so we might say, well, what was like the overall Oxford comma usage like again? So we could do GitHub and then pipe that to count Oxford or not. And so we can see that, you know, the, there's, more people in the whole study set that used the Oxford comma than that did not.
but among our older group, more people used the non-Oxford comma than did use the Oxford comma. So if you want to stay young, use the Oxford comma. That's, that's probably not quite true. So anyway, um, uh, did, did anybody else try uh, a different type of question or what kind of question did people able to get to thinking about other questions you could ask? I'm sorry, I have a question about something. Uh, yeah. So if I'm filtering, so for, for example, filtering the age, you filter it for, I guess, uh, the 45 to 60 and above 60. Do you have to mention in the code itself the, the, the column again? Or can you just have a pipe or end without the column? I, I, it's required in, in, in the function, right? Yeah, so if you, what you're asking is, if, can we do GitHub and then pipe that to filter age equals equals 45 to 60 um, and then or greater than 60. So this will not it doesn't work. work in R, right? right. Okay. So you have to you have to say age equals equals greater than 60 for it to work. Even if you have it as a I guess as a like a C parentheses if you kind of have them concatenated somehow like age equal equals C parentheses and inside you have the 45 to 60 and then comma above 60. So you're saying if we, so we'll see how this goes. If we do X equals age equals, uh, so C. Or yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, it's probably, this is probably the easiest way to do it. I'm not sure. I think I see where you're trying to go, but, but um, it's, it, it's too much like something okay. you could do would be to say um you know say you didn't know 45 to 60 say you had like x is 45 to 60. You could then do like github filter age equals x so if you do that then we yeah. should get all the um oops i have to do that um and if i count age See that we got all the people 45 to 60. But as far as like making this its own variable, I'm pretty sure you can do it. Um, but I, I don't know how to do it off the top of my head. Um, and it's mm -hmm. probably, probably, it's one of those cases where you can do it, but um, it, it's probably harder than it's, it's worth, worth trying for. Oh, okay, I see. So, Great. Well, yeah, Any other you. questions or comments or thoughts? Uh, we we had a different approach, which okay. was either as unsuccessful or it was successful successful but weird. Okay. Uh, we wanted to see the uh, socioeconomic impact on the usage of the Oxford or not. So okay. I can share my screen. Yeah, screen. let me stop sharing mine and you can show yours. Great. <laughs> Um, okay, so can you see the screen? Yep, great. Uh, so we wanted to filter out the graduate degree uh, in comparison with a much lower degree. We tried them all, but it was all, we would only get a graduate degree using the um, uh, Oxford or not. So you, you see, I, I've hashed out stuff that we had on the yeah so can i give you a hint yes so on line 112 to the right of your vertical line you have importance of grammar rather than education oh <laughs> thank you <laughs> yeah it's always the little things <laughs> uh, no oh wait sorry so Ah, that was a problem. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, but that's great. I mean, you, the, the syntax is, <laughs> right? The hard part is kind of thinking of the question and then laying it out how you would want to answer it. And you've got that, right? Like the syntax of a typo, I mean, professional programmers do that. But the hard part, I mean, I'm not lying to you here. Like the hard part really is thinking about the logic and the flow of of you know, asking a question and thinking about how would you answer it. And you did that, you just got one word wrong, so. 
That's okay. Great. That's good. Then. Thank you for the <laughs> input. Great. <laughs> Well, this is the top of the hour, and I really appreciate you coming back uh, this week. Uh, if you have any comments or suggestions, feel free to drop me an email. Um, it's uh, pschloss at umich.edu. And um, I, I want these to be useful for everybody as much as I can. Uh, it's hard to kind of serve everybody's interests, uh, but we'll, we'll see what we can. And I want to keep these interesting for people. And I like doing them, so hopefully you like uh, coming back and doing them. So with that, Thank you. Stay healthy, stay safe, and um, have a great week. Take care. Thank you.